Hey, it's James from Marketing for Restaurants, and welcome to Secret Source, the restaurant marketing podcast. How to create a restaurant unique selling proposition that works for your restaurant. Some restaurants are quiet, lose money, and the owner works 70 hours a week. Other restaurants are busy, profitable, and the owners work a few hours a day. What's the difference? They have a secret source. Join James from Marketing for Restaurants as he helps you come up with your recipe for restaurant success. Your secret sauce. G'day team, welcome back. This is the second part on our how to create a restaurant unique selling proposition. In the last episode, if you uh, haven't listened to it, you might want to go back and have a listen. We covered off on why they're important, what are the components of a unique selling pro- a proposition. Today, we're going to really get into the meat and potatoes of it. We're going to look at some examples and we're going to look at how you can create one. So yeah, let's crack on to it now. Now, the next thing is, how are you going to create a unique selling proposition? And I think, you know, there's a couple of steps in this process. Too many people just say, oh, we're going to cook authentic food. Yeah, whatever. Everyone does that. So let's let's try and move a little bit further on from that. My first question is, what is the kind of restaurant that you want to run? Okay, this is your restaurant and you're going to have to hire people. You're going to have to go through all of the pain and horror of running a restaurant. So what is the kind of if you close your eyes and imagine that restaurant, what is the kind of restaurant that you're running? Is it going to be very process driven, very quick? That's going to be something like an in and out burger, great processes, uh, married up with fresh food. Obviously, a winning combination because they've been around since 1948 and haven't changed a lot. So, which means that in 1948, probably cutting edge, now in 2020, that's a little bit retro, adds to the uh, the product that they're selling. So, really important to think about the kind of restaurant that you want to run because you're going to be in it. And if it's not the kind of restaurant that you want to run, then it's not going to be, um, I don't think it's going to be long term sustainable because it won't have that most important ingredient in your secret sauce, the secret sauce for your restaurant. And that is, I think, the passion. Have a think about your SWOT analysis for your restaurant. So, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, uh, and threats. So, is it a chef-driven restaurant? Is, is it going to be one guy or gal in there with some mad skills doing all sorts of crazy stuff? Or are you going to have a more of a McDonald's type approach to the people who are cooking the food? The produce, is it going to be fresh? Is it going to be authentic? Are you going to be importing herbs and spices from Sichuan province in China? Is it going to be cost and or price driven? Is it going to be cheap? Is it going to be expensive? Location, are you on the top of the mountain? Are you looking out over the bay? Is it going to be an experience? Is it something like, you know, something wacky like dying in the dark? What is it that you want to do? What is it that, that you've got the the strengths to be able to deliver on? Because I think that's really important. You want to play to your strengths. You want to minimize your weaknesses. Don't go coming up with an incredibly, and I've seen this, incredibly complicated menu with cooks who are 16 or 17 years old and they've just got no chance to be able to execute on what it is that they're hoping to deliver. Once you've done that, of course, a little bit of a sanity check. Does the restaurant stand up economically? And I've seen that where you'll have a restaurant uh, with a very high lease, very few number, a uh, very small number of seats and just never going to be able to be open enough hours and seat enough people to be able to, to cover their, their costs and to provide a little bit of profit. Now, the next one I think is a really good one. What sort of customers do you want of those customers? How many are there and how often are they going to come out for dinner? So somewhere like Alinea in Chicago, an awesome restaurant, that is somewhere that even if I lived in Chicago, I would not go very frequently because it's a little bit expensive. And on top of that, the experience is one of those things that maybe that's why they changed their menu, completely changed the experience because a lot of it is about the experience. Now, they will have their regulars there, but I would have thought much less regulars, many more uh, tourists, people coming there because a linear is a linear. Really important to have a good, strong idea about who your customers are because one of the things that, like I know that a restaurant is going to struggle when I say, so who are the people that you're targeting? And they say, well, it's people within 15 kilometers or 10 miles of our location. Really? Really? 
that's everyone. It could be a huge bundle of people. There'll be people who don't speak English. There'll be people who are vegetarian. There'll be people who are diet conscious. There'll be people who love steak. There'll be people who love chips or fries. There'll be people who love Indian cuisine. There'll be people who love pizza. What are you going to sell to these people? You know, you need to start really niching down into who it is that your customers are going to be so that you can have a much better conversation with them. And that's where your unique selling proposition is going to come into. So if I said that I had Melbourne's hottest vindaloo, I'm kind of, I'm going to be targeting people who like Indian food and, or I'm going to be targeting people who really like hot food. So definitely people who like hot vindaloos which I am one of those people, but people who like hot food generically. So people who who like hot burgers, I would have a crack at getting them to come into my restaurant because you ain't had a really hot meal until you've tried my super hot chicken vindaloo. Now, when you've worked out who those customers are, what is it that they want? And what will they pay for it? Because you've got to make sure that you've got those customers, that they've got the money to be able to pay for it for the number of times that you want them to be able to come in for the product that you're going to be providing them, whatever that product may be. Once you've gone through that exercise of looking at the kind of restaurant that you want to have and maybe have, you might be trying to come up with a, with a USP. It's useful then to have a look at some restaurant example restaurant USPs. So, and the one that everyone talks about is Domino's. So fresh hot pizza delivered to your door in under 30 minutes or it's free, guaranteed. The guarantee USP, what is the product that they're selling? So fresh hot pizza, when they say fresh, I think it's Domino's pizza. So we're leaning probably a little bit more towards hot than fresh. Pizza delivered to your door in 30 minutes or it's free. We're offering time, we're offering convenience. So I don't want to sit around for three hours waiting for some really amazing pizza. I want the pizza kind of now and I'm too lazy to go out and get it. So that convenience component really well articulated and they backed it up with a guarantee. Worked extremely well for them. Melbourne's best burgers. That is another example of a USP. Now in Melbourne where I've said this before, we've got the Burger Wars. It's a really, there's many great burger restaurants. If you run with Melbourne's Best Burgers, and because I see this, lots of towns, lots of cuisines, okay, how are we going to back that up? And hey, look, I get it. I'm a marketing guy, so I'm happy to run with Best Burgers as long as it's defensible somehow. If you've got a thousand reviews in Google and a thousand reviews on Facebook and they're all rating you at two and a half stars, I would not be running with Melbourne's Best Burgers. Because it's probably not. When someone's looking for best burgers in Melbourne, Google's going to say, well, you know, here's all of these people with, here's this restaurant with two and a half stars on average for their reviews. Probably not that good. Even though they say it's the best burger, I don't really believe them. And people aren't going to believe them as well if they see that. So you've got to be able to have some sort of way of backing it up. Melbourne's best burgers. So we use uh, organic chicken. It's freshly cooked for everyone. We've won this award, this award, this award, this award. And on top of that, you know what? We cook 1,200 burgers a day. Uh, We only do 1,200 burgers. At the end of the 1,200 burgers, we shut up shop. So you should come in. uh, You should come in quickly because, you know, we're often closed by seven o'clock at night. That is really quite compelling then. So I've, and I've said, you know, so we sell out. That's it. We sell out. What I've done, is I've crafted a little bit of a component there that's going to help you to understand why we are Melbourne's best burgers. Texas's hottest chili restaurant. That could work for you. We talked about the hot vindaloo. I really love hot food. Authentic Indian restaurant. We need to move on from that because that is not going to really cut it unless, unless you could have that written in Hindi and you could target people who speak Hindi. Now, if that was written in Hindi, and because when I go to the restaurant, and so obviously assuming that I'm in Australia or the UK, um, UK has got a similar Indian market from what I gather, i.e. lots of great Indian restaurants. If you go in there and there's a lot of Indian people there, then it probably is pretty authentic because what's the difference between a person from India who goes to an Indian restaurant and a person from and obviously I'm talking about an Indian restaurant, not in India. 
and a person who is like, so me from Australia going into an Indian restaurant, that Indian person, they're getting some sort of reference back to their home country, probably a reference back to their childhood. So what they're looking for, what the product that they're after is reminiscing about the food that their mother cooked for them. Really powerful. And then for me, I would go to that restaurant because I would like to taste authentic Indian food. Very aware of the fact that the food that we have in Australia, not as authentic as it could be because it's been Australianized as it has in the UK and definitely as it has been in the United States. Now, Melbourne's Best Burgers, we've talked about that one. What about when you bring it down to suburb Best Burgers? So this could be Springfield's Best Burgers. Now, I like this because who is the customer that we're targeting? So people who are near the suburb of Springfield and who like burgers. So that unique selling proposition is starting to get a little bit of power under its belt because it's going to target people with a little more precision. And I think that that's really important. So take the example where we talked about Melbourne's Best Burgers. When you bring that down to Springfield's Best Burgers, you would have those dot points that back up that unique selling proposition. So that, and they would appear in places like your Instagram account. You would say, you know, so we have the best freshest produce, Here's Farmer Bill and his beef that we're using. It's the potatoes from this farm, which they ship to us twice a week. So we are getting farm fresh local potatoes to make our fries. Farm fresh local fries probably puts you ahead of most of the people who are cooking burgers in your suburb. So your story about being Springfield's best burgers, hey, it's starting to stack up a killer photo in there. And now I'm thinking, yes, I like a good burger. Next time I want a burger, I'm going to try out your restaurant because it it probably does have Springfield's best burgers and I deserve it. And so best burgers, if it's the best burger, if you've got the story that can back that up and more importantly, when I bite into it, it's like, wow, this is amazing. Then you can probably charge a little bit more for that. Same burger as what someone else is producing, but because you've marketed it, because your unique selling proposition is around it being the best burger, then you can add an extra buck to it. Maybe it's going to be $2. And that extra dollar that you add, every time you sell one of those burgers, ka that entire dollar flows all the way from revenue, all the way through costs, all the way down to the bottom line, to the profit column. That's one extra dollar. And so- If margins are really, really, really tight and you're making 50 cents on a burger and now you've put your prices up a dollar and and shock horror, you might actually get more people coming in because it's now Springfield's best burger. So not only have you sold more, but you're not making 50 cents on a burger, you're making a dollar 50. So ignore the volume increase, you've tripled your profitability. Cool. That is the power of a unique selling proposition done right. And when it's a suburb name, it's pretty defensible. I've eaten a lot of burgers that say that they are the world's best burger. I've got to tell you, I'm quite the fan of the Ferg burger. Uh, That's an amazing burger. But if you come close, that's going to be pretty much good enough for your country. Last USP that I would talk about would be, so not really a USP, and this is I wanted to include it because I think it's a really good example of not really a unique selling proposition, but something that unifies the entire strategy of the business around something that's really important and something that is really desirable to customers. And that would be Nick Sorello's Nick's Pizza and Pub in Chicago. So they have a purpose, which is the Nick's experience. Our dedicated family provides this community an unforgettable place to connect with your family and friends, to have fun and to feel at home. The Nick's experience is a really important component of the success of his restaurants. Our dedicated family. So his staff have been there for many of them have been there for decades with him. And everyone knows how hard it is to retain staff. If you're struggling with how to retain staff, definitely order a copy of his book, Slice of the pie, 
a great book that really gives an amazing example of the way that he has been able to build a dedicated family of people who work in his restaurants provides this community and this is in italics so this community and it's a very much a community focused restaurant and i won't spoil it but definitely have a read of the book because it goes into the story of what community means to nick creates an unforgettable place it is unforgettable nick built it himself he's a builder or he was a builder and then what are you going to do there? you're going to connect with your family and friends it's a family friendly restaurant to have fun and to feel at home really baked into everything that they do there, a really powerful, unique selling proposition. Now, before we end off, I wanted to go through what our USP is and go through the process that we came up with to to articulate our unique selling proposition. So our big thing is you don't want to have the best restaurant that no one has ever heard of. Why do we have that? It's because this is something that resonates with some restaurant owners, not everyone. I'm not trying to sell to every restaurant owner. So there are restaurant owners out there who are experts in marketing. Okay. They probably don't need us. There are restaurant owners out there who think that they are experts in marketing. Okay. They don't need us. Now, even if they're not experts in marketing, that's fine. But I could spend two hours on the phone and I could list a hundred problems with the marketing that they're doing. And they would still think that they don't need us because they're experts in marketing not in my target demographic, too hard to convert. And they don't want our product. Restaurant owners who are working 70 hours a week, they don't even want to talk about marketing because when someone says, oh, you should do marketing, they go like, oh, I'm working so hard already. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, where am I going to find the time to do this marketing? So, We used to talk about, you know, we make your restaurants marketing easy. We got rid of that because people are like, oh, don't give me another job. Yes, it's probably going to be the most important thing that I can do in the restaurant to turn it around or to really increase the profitability so that I can get paid fairly for all of the hours that I put in. But don't give me another hour's worth of work a week because I don't have the time to be able to do that. We worked our system to ensure that restaurant owners aren't getting lots of extra work to do. We wanted to make the restaurant marketing fun. So we try and do as much of that as possible. And we know that our USP works because people call us up and say, I have a really great restaurant, but the problem is that no one's ever heard of us. How are we going to tell our story? And so some of them have got great stories. They just need to be able to tell that a little bit more successfully, a little bit more powerfully. That is what we help them with. And so our USP helps us to sort through all of the restaurant owners out there, because we don't want to talk to all of the restaurant owners. It helps align with what it is that we do. We've got the solution for that problem. It's not clear what we do. And we've had big discussions about this internally, but when people see it, when our customers see it, it's like, yes, it is a pretty good restaurant. And, you know, I've got to tell you, the other thing is, but we've picked up some customers like, oh, I need marketing help. I need marketing help. I need marketing help. And you talk to them. It's like, okay, so you don't need marketing help. You need team help. You've got to be able to build a team first. You need to be able to cook. Seriously, people eat with their eyes and I see your food and then I'm no longer hungry. This is what I would like to see if I wanted to, if I was on a diet Oh, I'm starting to feel really hungry. Let's have a look at some of their photos. Wow, not hungry anymore. The presentation, the skills in the kitchen, the cost control, the menu engineering, all of those sort of things. If you're running a restaurant that's not working too well, the last thing that you want to do in many cases is drive more customers to the restaurant because the cracks that you're going to, that you've got in the restaurant now, they're going to become chasms. And we've seen it. Restaurants that haven't done their costings properly that go out of business faster because they've got great marketing. Businesses that destroy their reputation a lot faster because they haven't got a great team able to deliver on that product. Uh, so the other thing is that, you know, it, it people, the, the thing I like about our USP, you don't want to have the best restaurant that no one else has ever heard of. And I know that there are lurkers out there who've watched marketing for restaurants for two years 
I've had conversations with a couple of people and they said, you know what, listen to the podcast and I listened to the interview with Carrie Luxem, really worked through some of the issues that we had there. We've done a little bit of menu engineering. I think we're now ready to start driving more people into the restaurant. Boom. That's our perfect customer. That's who we want to be talking to. So there you have it. We've covered off on restaurant USPs across these two episodes. So we've talked about what they are, why you need one, and some example restaurant unique selling propositions and how to come up with one that is really going to help you differentiate yourself from your competitors, sell to the type of customer that you want to come into your restaurant and really tell that, make that brand promise that is going to get those customers to come in and to get them to come in again. So find new customers and turn them into repeat customers because that is the name of the game when it comes to restaurant marketing. Now, I hope you got something out of it. If you did, I would love to hear what your restaurant USP is. Send it in and I'll I'll put some examples in our show notes with a link to your website because I'm always about, you know, trying to help restaurant owners out there. I think uh, I'd just be keen to get some examples. And then, of course, you know, we can uh, we can advertise it. And a, a link on our website, we get a lot of people going to the website. So obviously, it'll help you with your SEO. But yeah, I'd just be keen to see, to get as, a list of as many restaurant USPs out there as possible. I think that that would be really cool. So yeah, that's it. Have a glorious week. Please don't get COVID. Stay safe out there. Yeah, uh, hopefully, you'll have a busy week. Bye. Want more customers for your restaurant, cafe or takeout? Every month, our marketing tools and information are used by thousands of restaurant owners just like you to help them find more customers and turn them into repeat customers. All of our tools and information is designed specifically for restaurant owners. We know you don't have a lot of time to spend marketing or learning complicated procedures, so our tools are quick and easy to use. If you're looking to increase your revenue and profits or want to work less hours, check out marketingforrestaurants.com.